So I hope by now you're feeling pretty comfortable about seeing the ways that whole notes, half notes and quarter notes can help us represent rhythm in printed sheet music. And those are all really fantastic things, as long as everything we want to show, every sound in the music that we want to show, lasts for more than one beat, because the shortest note that we've got so far, the quarter note, you might remember it as looking something a little bit like this, with a filled in note head and a stem, lasts for one beat. Thing is though, what happens if you want to show something that lasts for a shorter amount of time than this? Maybe a fraction of a beat, like a half or a quarter of a beat? Well obviously there are ways in notated music to show the sorts of shorter notes that we might find from time to time. So that's what we're going to have a look at in this video. Let's make a start by having a look at a note that lasts for half a beat. It's called an eighth note. So here are two eighth notes written on a staff. They actually look very similar to notes that we already know, namely the quarter note, because they've still got this filled in note head and they've got a stem, and we've seen that before. But what's different about these notes is they also have what we call a flag, a little tail that comes off the top of the note like that. Just as we saw with half notes and quarter notes, the stems on eighth notes can either point upwards if the note is below the middle line of the staff, or they can point downwards if the note head is above the middle line of the staff. So you'll see here this is, say it was a treble clef, this is a G, and so the stem points upwards, and this would be a C again on the treble staff, and so the stem would point downwards. So we've said that an eighth note lasts for half a beat. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, say we had two of these. Here's our first eighth note with its little flag on the top there, and our second eighth note. Try and draw the flag in the same way, although it might not come out exactly the same. There we go. Now, these two sounds can be played in the same time as a quarter note. Meaning that each of these sounds lasts for exactly half a beat. Now actually, it's quite unusual to see two eighth notes sitting apart from each other like this in printed music. That's because we actually use something called a beam to connect these two together. It kind of makes it easier for us to read. So instead of drawing them as we see above here, actually whenever we have two eighth notes that sit together, most of the time we connect them above with this beam, just like this. You might recognise something like this, you may have seen it before. And so here we have a group of four eighth notes beamed together in exactly the same way. Even though they look a little bit different to these notes up here, actually they're exactly the same and all last for half a beat. So let's just quickly see how much time we need to play the notes written here. Well, each one lasts for half a beat, so we can write half above each one, just like this, and add them all together. Well, four halves is two which means that to play all of these notes we would need two beats or the same amount of time as to play one half note. Now of course we might want to show a note that's even shorter than this in the music so how do we do that? Well we need a new type of note this time called a sixteenth note. Okay so here are some sixteenth notes but what makes them different from the eighth notes that we were just looking at? Well you'll have noticed that they contain a filled in note head just the same way as the eighth note and the quarter note that we've seen before. They also have a stem. But you'll see here that instead of one flag at the top they now have two. So each time we add a flag to our note we're effectively halving its length. This is an eighth note that lasts for half a beat and this is a sixteenth note which lasts for a quarter of a beat. And the way we write these notes onto the staff is very similar to the quarter note and the eighth note that we've seen already. Again, if the note head is sitting below the middle line, the stem is going to point upwards, and if the note head is above the middle line, it's going to point downwards. And just as the same way we were able to group together 
sets of eighth notes into more manageable groups that were easy to count and easy to read, we do exactly the same thing with sixteenth notes. But instead of one beam going across the top, we have two. Just like this. So whenever I see this in music, I know instantly that these are sixteenth notes, and that I can fit four of them into one beat. To finish, I'm going to write out a rhythm for you. It's going to make use of all the different note lengths that we've learnt so far. So I'm going to start with a quarter note, which obviously lasts for one beat. Then I'm going to put in two eighth notes, just like this. And then I want a longer sound in my rhythm, so I'm going to put in a half note. Then I want something quicker, so I'm going to put in four sixteenth notes. Then a quarter note, then a half note, and then it's nice to finish it off with a whole note. So I'm going to clap this rhythm now, but I think maybe before I do that you might like to have a go yourself. All you need to do is count in a steady beat, and then you'll be able to work out how fast or slow all the other notes sound in relation to that beat. So say you're counting in your head, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's a pretty solid and steady beat, and you can work out how all the other notes fit around that. It's actually quite useful to keep counting as you clap or play any kind of sound. So I'm going to give this rhythm a go now. If you like, you can clap along with me. To establish the beat in my head and so that you know how fast I'm playing, I'm going to count to four first. Then I'm going to start clapping the notes that I've written down. You can then clap along with me, or you can just follow the notes on the screen. So let's have a go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, hopefully, that didn't seem too confusing, and hopefully, you're really excited because now we're able to read pretty complex and pretty different rhythms in music.